I look here in my new stuff code set to true and the type is set to set so that ought to do it that I'm just going to do here I'm just going to put a console.log obj just to let's just make sure we're actually seeing seeing this Um, so I inject, oh, let's bring up the console so we see these things we're logging. Ah, nothing. So we've, that console.log log has not been hit for some reason. Now, why is that? I'm just going to do a few sanity checks make sure I'm actually editing the file. I think I am, but I am because I can see the code is rebuilding whenever I save. Um, I didn't have the console open when I last reloaded, so it's possible it cached it. So let's... Nope. Okay. Right, we're going to... I know I could just run the debug and step debug through it, but that's just not my style. Console long object at that level. We'll home in on this pretty quickly, I think. Um, inject. Yeah, so you can see lots of things coming through. And you can see these two. Ah, they're strings. They're coming through as... They are literally strings. So... Something is going awry. With I think something's going wrong with the needs stringify. Um. Maybe it's not. Maybe something's going awry with the decoding. Um. Maybe not all the code I actually think I need is here. Maybe I need to be looking at Go and look at the debug node just to check what it does when it receives messages. Uh, this is pretty old code, so, which is why it's all code I wrote, <laughs> but it doesn't mean it still doesn't trip me up from time to time. Um, So even now I'm not finding I'm trying to find where oh yeah this always catches me out so the function we're editing is called build message element but we expose it under the name create object element so me just trying to search for here we go. Create object element. Payload. Red.utils.decode object. That's what we care about. We don't care about yet. We don't care about the build message element. It's the decode object we have to do first. Uh, right. Let's um, let us just roll back. I mean, I'm going to leave that one change we did make, but decode object. Here we are. Um, yeah, here we are. So 
no longer is it just array, but we also now support set and map that needs to be treated as JSON. Right, that's good. That's This will be a step forward. Uh, so no one said hi in the chat. So if, if you are in the chat, do say hi. Just let me know you're out there. Right, this is improved. Um, in fact, it's improved a lot. So here we have message.payload that has both set and map. And hey, Steve, thanks for letting me know you're out there. Um, when we expand set, you can see it's a set of two elements. And there they are. Map, we haven't done yet. And here when we've passed in set as the top level thing, it looks like an array of two things, which kind of looks like a set. Awesome. So set is now working. Now we just need to handle map. Let's get it showing the map properly rather than what it's doing at the moment. So we fixed decode object so it knows to it knows about set and map types now. So it's the build message element. Um, somewhere in here there's and we've we had this ob this logic for arrays and that was nice and simple um somewhere we need to tell it to treat maps as if they were an object um So type of object is object, which is good. Or is it good? I think so. No, I think I need to. Mm, just bear with me whilst I think this through. Um, right, that's all the logic to dealing with things that think or look like an array. And there we are. That's the trick that it uses to deal with array-like uh, array things. Let's go and have a look back at the object. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it's slightly hard for me to explain as I go because I'm kind of... It does lots of shuffling around of variables and the like, so we create a new... Yeah, and then what would we want to work on data instead? Let's just find find all the places that we Oh no, that's outside our if blocks, we didn't want to change that one. That should be all the references to the ob object when we're dealing with objects. Oh, let's just try it. Cool, that's worked. So now we've got a set with one and two. We have a map with one or two. Okay, it says object there, whereas it manages to say set there. We'll fix that next. Up here, when it's nested, again, you can see it says set there properly, but it says object there. We'll fix that in a moment. Um, yeah, we're getting close. We are getting close. Um, if I just look back at... Um, there, type, 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 yeah. No, type is object. So somewhere in here, 
uh, I think there might be the word object hard coded there <laughs> so instead of that we want that to be variable type because that will then say object unless we know it's of a different type in which case it will say that instead So let's have a look now. So when we inject, okay, it still says object up here. We'll come back to that in a minute. Down here, when I expand it, oh, it still says object. And there it says set, which is okay. When I expand that, it's okay. That change I just made wasn't, wasn't the revolution I thought it would. Oh no, there, it says map. Okay, maybe I just didn't refresh properly. It still says object there. It says set there, but Crucially, it says map in that case, which is awesome. So that was a, a fix for the better. What we now need to fix, two things. When it's collapsed, it just says object and object. We don't want it to say object. We want it to say set and map. And down here, um, yeah, this header up here should just say map. <sighs> right. Um, where so the thing to do is find where have I hard coded the word object and it's this one because here you can see I'm setting the text of a DOM element to the word object um, and oh that's ideal because this is right below where we were picking out the better name which is type so I'd fixed it lower down where I had the word object hard-coded. I'd missed this one. Let's reload. Inject. Okay, it still says object, object. If I expand this one, it now says map. Okay, we've fixed another case, which is good. Ah, that says set to, this says map but it's lost, it has lost its number, which is odd. Where has that come from? <laughs> Just gonna go quiet for a moment whilst I Figure out what has that, why has that happened? Yeah. Oh, that, that's indentation wrong. Um, Yeah, if you don't know, just console.log. We're so close. So I inject that. So you can see we get type map. Yeah, we're getting a type of map there. But why in the other case do we get what I'm trying to work out is when I expand the set, it has the two in the brackets. When I expand the map, it doesn't. Um, so I'm just going back to look at, in the case of an array, what's the actual data we're getting? So I'm sure I was setting it them both consistently in the back end. In fact, I know, well, uh, Node-RED has crashed. Or at least Node.js has crashed. Not Node.red's fault. Come on. Where's the window? Ah. Should it be capitalised? 
Yeah. That Steve, you're right. It probably should. There is a sort of a cosmetic thing that we do at too low a case because there's some inconsistencies with array. Um Yeah. I will let's get things connected. Yeah, Jim, but I'll, I'm going to go check the runtime in a second. I just want to compare and contrast what the set and map object looks like. So here, hopefully you can make out, when we received the set, you can see it has a type of set without the square brackets and map without the square brackets. And yet, when it gets displayed up here, it's got the square brackets back. Um, so I think there must be some, there must be another, um, in fact, there must be some more code in here. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so. You can see it's actually, um, it's doing the work to add that. Oh, this is interesting. In fact, I'm not going to worry so much about length of map because we don't do a length for objects. So it would actually be oddly inconsistent. What do we do for, let's just add Uh, if we add an array, just so we can do a, a full proper compare and contrast of what these things will look like. So the array Let's go through them in order. So when it's an object, it's just the word object and it doesn't have a count of how many properties are in it. If it's array like, which is an array or a set, then it's it tells you how many things are in it. So there's something to be said that it'd be useful for the object and map to have that count. But right now at 10 past nine, I'm not gonna lose sleep the fact it doesn't have the number next to map because I would want to then look at improving it for object as well. And I'm probably going to end up doing some pixel pushing to make that look nice if we do that. But, um, but the main point is map and set are now displayed properly. And that is nice. So just uh, for completeness. Um, having said, I'm not going to display the count. I'm not, because we don't display counts for regular objects, I'm not going to worry about displaying counts for map types. Actually, I'm just scanning through finding the rogue console.logs that I always accidentally leave in. Some are allowed, some aren't. Um, I'm just going to go back to the server side and change the format to be just map and not include the size. Yeah, it may well be I'll wake up tomorrow and decide, actually, no, we should have the size and we should do this properly. But at least now sets and arrays are displayed somewhat consistently. Um, oh, no, one last thing to, one last thing to squelch. In the, when it's expanded, it, the type hint is correct, set, map, and array. When it's collapsed, it's object, object, array. So this is, this is the final, th final thing we need to fix. And then um, I'm going to have a cup of tea. So back in the editor side um, 
we've been in build message element. I think what we need is uh, build message header or build message summary value. So this is what gives that sort of one line summary. Um, dum, 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 dum. Yeah, so here you can see all these special cases, checking the type property, is it a buffer, is it an array? So I'm just gonna copy and paste the array case a couple of times. Instead of array, we'll do set, and this array will do map. Um, that's all good. And then so for set, we will say set and this one will just say map without the length. And is that all? I think that's all. So, reload. Reinject. Oh, no, still there. So let's reload again just to make sure I may have, because my laptop's having a bit of a slow, there we are. Cool, so it now says set for the set, map for the map, array for the array, and that's consistent when they're expanded and collapsed, and oh, the world looks a better place for it. Excellent, that's all I'm gonna do. That, I think, is good enough. Um, I think you're right, Steve, I think we should consider capitalization, but from a style point of view, we, we do lowercase it always. Um, and it is worth thinking about the length hint here of map types. Um, but decide what does that mean for, should we do a similar thing for object types? Um, I don't know, but I think this will do. And again, good considering I know some others have asked about map and set type in the before, but they've they've not pushed it. The fact that Yash found it and actually went to the length of sticking in a pull request was awesome. Um it's just as you can see, his fix when doing the encoding was um a somewhat brute force way of if it's a object type, have a go at just pulling out its values. And if if value.values doesn't exist, you just catch the exception and return the value. Um, so it's kind of a bit brute force way of encoding things that have a values function, which work would work for sets and it would work for maps, but you'd for maps you'd lose the key value side of it. So um yeah, uh, perfectly valid attempt at a fix, but as hopefully you've seen over the last 45 minutes, um, it takes a little bit more work, but the end result is awesome. And the nice thing is this is, these are standard utilities. So things like uh, the flow debugger, which I, ah, I haven't got enabled at the moment, will just work. Um, yeah, the flow debugger will just work with it. Um, for the point where we get the flow debugger displaying these messages as well. Um, which will be nice. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's... Oh, I, I, I'm not going to do the commit right now because there's no point you watching me do some commits. Uh, yeah, well, thanks everyone for joining. I um, hope that was interesting. Um, as you can see, getting messages into the editor takes quite a lot of work. <laughs> It's why we don't do a real-time view of messages. Um, and we've, we do try and stick to common JavaScript types and commonly used things. And we just try and minimize the work doing. But map and set seem reasonable. There are others that cases could be made that could be added to this. But I think we're good for now. All right, all. Um, 
watch this space. We should hopefully have Node Red 2.0 Beta 2 later this week. Uh, there's an outstanding issue with the HTTP request node working with proxies, but good news is a fix is percolating its way th upstream. And as soon as that's published, it unblocks us and we can ship the next version of the beta. And there'll be a new beta of the flow debugger, which has got much better um, handling of lots of messages, better tools to only put uh, an option to only pause individual nodes where breakpoints are rather than all your flows and interesting things like that. And we will release, I raise, we never actually got around to releasing a beta of the linter, the lint tool. So that will come later this week as well. So the lint tool is this one that can look at your flows and give you lots of hints about what's wrong. Like I've got a bunch of stuff, a bunch of nodes that aren't currently aligned to the grid, which is one of the many rules you can enforce. Um, still lots more rules to write, but you know, we've got a decent set to get going and we'll build out from there. All right, that's it, enough waffle. Um, I'm gonna go have a cup of tea. Thank you everyone. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you've watched this far, well done, congratulations. Uh, please do like and subscribe. Um, I will be back next Monday, all being well, and every Monday unless life gets in the way. Um, yeah, take it easy all, and have a good evening. See, I had two weeks off. I can't remember where the button is to stop this thing. So, um, wait, whilst I just fumble for it. Oh, no, that's right. I like to do this. Good night.